My name is Stan, and I'm recovering from, oh, wrong place we're at today. Well, we're not in Celebrate Recovery. But tomorrow, yeah, that'll be good. Anyway. It's a beautiful, overcast, kind of rainy Sunday morning up in Wahiawa. It's brisk, coolness, and wet, and all the good stuff. All the stuff that may make you want to sleep in, which I almost did today. <laughs> oh, but praise God, praise God. He is the light unto the nations. He is our refuge in the storm. He is our peace in tribulation. He is our hope, the Holy One. O tu la donai kito kilelam kasto tu la donai ki. Here we bow in adoration, giving thanks for all He's done. Here we stand in revelation, we are redeemed, redeemed by the Son. of the preacher who they preach about prayer they talk about prayer but they never pray in their service so i'm talking about reading the bible let's read the bible okay let's just read it <laughs> we're gonna look at ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 through 20 i'm gonna read this morning from the message 
it's a modern day translation, but I've checked it with the NAS, NASB, NRSV, New King James Version, King James Version, Amplified Bible, it kind of all lines up, so I've checked it in advance, you can believe me. But here's what it says. I love this. Well, first let me read this monologue to you that the Lord gave me the other day. For me, the greatest tragedy in my life would be to be at the point of my physical death, drawing my last breath and realize that I've been asleep all my life. Only to wake up in heaven and realizing I've wasted my life here on earth. I've been busy all my life working, playing, and worrying about this existence we call life, but to what end? Sounds like Solomon, doesn't it? <laughs> For the purpose of this message, sleep refers to living a life as a professing Christian, but not acting like our Heavenly Father and bearing no resemblance to Him. Furthermore, not living a life characterized by love, unconditional love, the God kind of love. And then the Lord brought this to my mind. In Proverbs 24, 30 through 34, it says that Solomon passed by the field of a sluggard to his work and by the vineyard of a man lacking sense. And behold, it was completely overgrown with thistles. Its surface was covered with nettles and its stone wall was broken down. He said when he saw it, he reflected on it. He looked and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest then poverty will come as a robber and your want like an armed man. So as I ponder this parable myself, I received this instruction. Will God walk by his vineyard and see spiritual sluggards, his people lacking sense? Will he see his vineyard completely overgrown with, with the cares of this world? Will he see his people covered with weeds of worry and his spiritual foundations broken down? Will God see his children with their arms crossed over sleeping? Will he see those who have taken their hands off the plow and turned back? It's all scripture if you think about it. Will he see the thief and the vineyard killing, stealing, and destroying his fields because the devil has not been resisted? If the devil's bothering you, resist him and he'll flee from you is what it says in James. Will he see the strong man's home being broken into and robbed because the strong man is sleeping with his arms folded? We're going to talk about that next week. The husband is supposed to be the prophet, priest, and king of the home. And he's supposed to protect the home. But when the husband crosses his arm and sleeps, he lets, he, lets the strong, he lets the enemy come into his home and do trouble. Is that right, Chad? God forbid. Here's the good news. Let's all wake up from our spiritual sleep and apply Ephesians 1, 5, 1 through 21 to our daily lives and be imitators of God, children who act like look like and love like their Heavenly Father. Does that make sense? This should not come as a shock to anybody, but we're in desperate times right now. The time for sleeping is over. We're in the fourth quarter with a two-minute warning with no timeouts. And the spiritual man a woman and the church has got to rise up and be the manifold wisdom of God to this world because the world's going to hell in a handbasket. I'm afraid that George Barna says they did a research that 51% of people sitting in church evangelicals don't believe the Bible's inspired word of God. I'm afraid we've got some problems inside the house more than we've got outside the house. But we've got to have hope this morning. Verses 1 and 2. The message. Ephesians 5. Watch what God does, then you do it. How do I know what God does? It's recorded in 66 books of the Bible. And there's thousands upon thousands of witnesses to what God does by watching a godly life. Like children who, who learn proper behavior from their parents. This is a message so it sounds a little different what you're looking at. Mostly what God does is love you. Think about it. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious but extravagant. I hear people say, well, once my wife or my husband or my child says they're sorry, 
then I'll show him my love again. Well, that's not the kind of love that Christ had. Love, Christ's love was unconditional. They killed him, and on the cross he says, Father, what did he say? Forgive them. And we're going to talk about next week, if a husband would respect his wife and lay his life down for his wife, she would submit to his authority and love him. And we're going to learn some, we're going to keep learning some biblical things. But today we're learning about Christ, his love is extravagant. I've heard people say, well, you can't love those kind of people because they take advantage of you. That's what Christ loved all of. Did you know in the Bible, it said that the people who loved to hang out with Christ were prostitutes, whores, tax collectors, like IRS agents. Because when they came into his presence, they felt love instead of condemnation. He spoke the truth, but he spoke it in love. Who hangs out with you? Who runs away from you? If you've been in the church a long time, does your family want to stay away from you because you're, you're more, use the Bible as a club over their head? Or they want to come into your presence because they feel forgiveness, acceptance, love, hope. That's a question you ought to ask yourself today. I mean, we're reading this Bible, but the Bible's reading us, and we need, to, we need to start thinking about who hangs around us and who doesn't. Who's afraid to hang around us because of the way we act? And we're going to learn today, it's time to wake up and act like our Heavenly Father. Prodigal Son, you can read it. Is this getting too tough, Levander? You're going to be 70 tomorrow. Is I'm getting too tough here? Should I, should I tone it down? Should I sugarcoat it? Should I give you cotton candy that melts in your mouth and leaves you a stomach ache? Or should I preach the Word of God? That's what I love about Levander. Boy, he's a, he'll amen it for you. He did not love... Look, check this out. He did not love in order to get something from us, but to give us everything of Himself to us. Love like that. I was raised by a Marine. He was tough before he became saved. And this is the impression I got from him. As long as you make A's and do your homework and do this stuff, I love you. But if you mess up, I won't love you. And some of you were raised that way and you think your Heavenly Father's that way. And he's not that way. There's nothing you can do to make him love you more. And there's nothing you can do to make him love you less. There was two kids in the living room playing with uh, a little truck they got for Christmas. And Billy was always in trouble, so he started banging on the truck and he broke it. And he saw Daddy coming into the living room. He said, oh no, he's going to give me this law. He's going oh. <laughs> And Daddy looked at Billy and Billy said, you don't love me now that I broke it? He says, no, I love you the same, but it breaks my heart that you broke something that I gave to you. See, that's the difference. When God gives you these things and you, you throw them away and cast them away, He doesn't love you less, but it breaks His heart. He gave you His only Son so you can have everything. When you don't receive it and accept it and live in it, He doesn't hate you. It breaks His heart. Because I think it's said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. He already gave everything He has. And the Scripture says, If He gave His only Son, how much more will He give you? His children, if you ask. But you have not because you ask not. And it says, and when you do ask, you ask for the wrong motives. He's not going to give you something for the wrong motive. But the more you're connected with him, the more you understand him, you'll know what to ask for and what not to ask for. Whew. So, number one in your notes. Imitate God. I see people imitating Tom Cruise, Superman, Aquaman, they imitate all these people on TV, and you get to know them, they all have more troubles than we got. Tom Cruise jumped up on the couch and ranting and raved over something. Imitate God. So the question is, who are you acting like? Ask yourself today, who am I acting like? And you're probably more often not going to say, oh, that's the way my daddy acted, that's the way my mama acted, that's the way... My uncle, that's the way, and say, Lord, help me to act like you. Does that make sense? 
much time do I got? I got 10 minutes. So I got to get this wrapped up. Just kidding. Just kidding, folks. I will go at it, baby. All right. Verse 3, three through 4. I'm on TV stand. I know it. I get excited. I told my wife last night, tomorrow is going to be the best day of the week. The best hour and a half of my week is when I stand here and pray. It's the best. I mean, I love speaking to God's word. Then I go all next week and get convicted of what I preached about. <laughs> That's okay. Three through four. Don't allow love to turn into lust. I have seen and heard so many Christians go to Bible college and everything and they meet this girl and they have sex and they say, oh, we love each other though. It's okay. Then a baby comes and they don't even get married because the love turned to lust. If you love someone, you can wait. True love waits. If you love someone, you don't have to commit adultery because you're faithful to that person. Don't let love turn to lust. Setting off a downhill slide into sexual promiscuity, filthy practices, or bullying greed. Though some tongues just love the taste of gossip. Those who follow Jesus have better uses for language than that. Don't talk dirty or silly. That kind of talk doesn't fit our style. Thanksgiving is our dialect. The next time you're tempted to gospel, gospel, Gossip or slander. Sometimes churches prayer lines become just gossip. Did you hear what sister? Oh, let's pray for her. The next time you're tempted to gossip, thank God for what you have. Does that make sense? Okay, number two in your notes. Don't allow love to become lust. And number three, don't talk dirty or silly. What does that mean? Don't tell jokes that demean women. Don't tell jokes that make fun of cultures and races. It's not funny to them. Don't even listen to it. If somebody starts that stuff, we're going to see a little bit later. Just walk away from it. Does that make sense? Verse 5. You can be sure that using people or religion or things just for what you can get out of them will get you nowhere and certainly nowhere near the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of God. We are full of a society that just wants to use people for who they are and what they can do for them. The first thing they ask you, they meet you is, what do you do for a living? And they got this little list in their head. I'm a plumber. Oh, I need some plumbing in my house. Will you come over? I just met you. You're asking me to come to your house and do some plumbing. It's kind of a joke in a way, but we're, we're, we get this mindset to use people instead of love people. Let's use them. Pastors do it. We say, oh, this guy would be good in worship. And we, and we wear people out. With it. We have so many things for them to do, they can't even come to church. We wear them out so much. But it's for the Lord. So we've got to start looking at people as Jesus. And not using them, but helping them. Dale Carnegie said, if you help people re re achieve their dreams, you'll be successful. That's Dale Carnegie. Does that make sense? So I want you to think about number four is here is don't use people or things for selfish ends. I want you to think about today and next week. Have I been using people or taking advantage of people, or am I loving people and accepting people? Does that make sense? Here's the difference between preaching and teaching. Teaching, you have here to read the word. Preaching, ask you something. Demands an answer. That's what Jesus did. He demanded an answer. So I want you to take this home and think about, am I using people? Am I talking dirty or silly? Am I loving like Jesus? Does that make sense? Just think about it. Be a giver, not a taker. Follow God's example. All right. Verse 6 through 7. Oh, this is a good one. Don't let yourselves get taken in by religious smooth talk. God gets furious with people who are full of religious sales talk but want nothing to do with Him. Don't even hang around people like that. This is what it is. You meet somebody in church. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. God's good. He's awesome. You see Him Monday through Friday. Everything comes out of their mouth. You wouldn't even believe. What is going on here? But on Sunday, hallelujah, praise the Lord. God, He's a God of miracles. He's a... But you know when you watch Him during the week, it's sales talk. 
What's sales talk? I used to be a car salesman nine years. What sales talk is? Hey, man, this car has power windows, locks, cruise, tilt, steering wheel, pile carpeting, automatic trunk. It's perfect. I can get you into it for easy payments, one fifty a month for one hundred and sixty months. You want to come on in and get this car? That's sales talk. Here's some more sales talk from preachers. Just get saved and God, everything will be all good in your life. It'll all be all good. You'll never have another problem as long as you live. God, he, He'll take care of you. And you get home, you start reading Job and say, what? He didn't. And he's talking about Paul, the thorn in his flesh. Sales talk, is, this is sales talk. It's all going to be good. Well, it is when Jesus comes back. But in between now and then, there's going to be a little bit of struggling, right? Do you feel today like you felt you're going to turn 70 tomorrow? Do you feel like today like you felt 30 years ago? Okay. I just turned 58. Life is, life gets difficult. I like this little slogan. I watch uh, this soundscape at TV at night and it says, when someone says, life is hard, the person says, compared to what? Yeah, life is hard. Is that news? Life's hard. But God is good. Think about this. Number five, don't be deceived by imitators. The Bible says that the devil comes as an angel of light and you have to test the spirits. Some of these folk can really, really look close to something until you start looking close to them. Don't follow all these cults and all these things and all these... Blah, blah, blah. We learned this in school, didn't we? One bad apple runs the whole barrel. So what's this talking about? Don't hang out with these bad apples. Invite them to church, do things for them, but don't hang out with them because before long you're going to start acting like them and talking like them and being like them. Hang out with people who are trying to do the right thing. Does that make sense? Verse 8 through 10, you groped your way through that murk once, but no longer. You're not in the open. You're out, of, you're out in the open now. The bright light of Christ makes your way plain, so no more stumbling around. Get on with it. The good, the right, the true, these are the actions appropriate for daylight hours. Figure out what will please Christ, then do it. So number six, Walk in the light. And number seven, expose the darkness. Jesus is the light, therefore walk with Jesus. Satan is darkness, so stay away from him. As a matter of fact, resist him and he'll flee from you. I meet Christians that, uh, you know, there's some religions that have all kinds of different things and you can lose your salvation, not lose your salvation. And they say, how many sins can I do before I lose it? I said, that shouldn't even be a question. I'm never going to lose my salvation. But that's a dumb question to ask, isn't it? That's like me. I have diabetes. Tell my wife, how many brownies do you think I can eat before it's a problem? That's why you check your sugar. Let's say I'll eat five. Oop, it's for, I'll eat ten. Oh, 15 is over the top. I should say I get weird brownies. <laughs> Does that make sense? Let's stop getting so close to the edge of the world. We have kids, kids now, there's more kids that are depressed, more suicides. But watch, watch what they watch. This TikTok and all this stuff, it's a bunch of garbage. It's garbage. Even, even the Disney Channel, I mean, some of this stuff is garbage. Parents should be watching what their kids watch. I mean, they're, they're going to get upset with you, but tell them you can't watch that. I, I can't believe what's on the suppo supposed family hour now. When I used to watch family hour, it was... Leave it to Beaver, Lassie. Now it's, Beaver has two, I don't even want to say what it is. I mean, this, this is crazy. But, and we wonder why people are killing each other. Violence now is just so normal. Nobody thinks anything. It used to, if you saw somebody cut their finger, you'd scream. Now, now you see a head chop off, nothing to you. That's the enemy preparing us for, we got to watch what we watch. And listen to what we hear. Well, this is good. Watch what we watch. <laughs> we're depressed because we're walking in the darkness, and the darkness is depression. 
You want to get out of depression? Walk in the light and act like Jesus. Will it be easy? No, it might not be easy. It'll take work. But it sure takes a lot of work on the other end too. I've heard people say, I can't afford marriage counseling. Can't afford it. I don't want to pay for it. Then they have a divorce and they lose half of everything they have. Well, a lot cheaper, isn't it, to get marriage counseling? It is to have to go through and separate the car and the kids. And it's a lot cheaper. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Verse 11 through 16. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't waste your time on useless work, mere busy work. The barren pursuits of darkness expose these things for the sham that they are. It's a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in the darkness where no one will see. Rip off the cover of those frauds and see how attractive they look in the light of Christ. And here's part of the text, key verse for the day. Wake up from your sleep. Climb out of your coffins. Christ will show you the light. So number eight, don't waste your time. We can be real busy in the church. But I think the last thing Christ told us was to go and make disciples. So if we're doing a bunch of things that aren't making disciples, we might as well just cut those things out. Well, why are you feeding these people? Why are you feeding them? Why am I feeding them? You know why I'm feeding them? Because there's 26 people feeding them and that's making disciples. We had people last week doing worship and handing out tracts. We're making, the mission is to make the disciples. The feeding is the outcome, but the mission is to make disciples and to get people to appreciate what they have, to give to somebody else they appreciate it. That's the mission. I feel like shouting, man, running, hallelujah. Okay, number eight, don't waste your time. Number nine, wake up from spiritual sleep. 11 through 16. So watch your step. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. These are desperate times. Number 10. Make the most of God-sent opportunities. We call them divine appointments. Some people, God puts you in front of so many people I'll give you an example. There are certain people that are good at talking and good at helping people. And God keeps moving them around from different jobs. And here's what they say. Why do I keep ending up with the same kind of people every time I go to a different job? Because God wants you to help those people. And also maybe it's because it's not the people, it's you. So it's a divine appointment to change yourself. There's people out here all the time. I mean, it's like, God lines up, I, this is what I think God does. If you've ever been to, uh, the one, seen one of these big flight things where they have these big flat towers and they have all these planes and everything and they tell you where they're going to take off and so God looks up and says, oh, here's Lavander. He's getting ready to go over here to Wahiwa. Oh, this lady, I've been needing, I've been needing this lady to see the love of Christ. Let's, let's, she's, she was on her way to Milani, but let's direct her back to Wahiwa so she'll run into Lavander at the Longs. How do I know this? Because I've heard story after story of how people's lives were changed because of one divine appointment. Does that make sense? So look for open divine appointments, ones God set for you. Verse 17, don't live careless, unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the master wants. So verse 11, or uh, Number 11 on your notes. Seek God's will for yourself. Every day when you get up, ask God, what is your will for me today? Is that too much to ask? God, what's your will for me today? You might be surprised. He might say, you know you've been tired. Why don't you just call in sick and take the day off? He might do it. He knows what you need. Now, don't do this. Oh, honey, I think God told me to stay home. I heard a voice. That's funny when I hear people say, God told me to get a divorce. The Bible says you're supposed to be happy, and I ain't happy. Some That wasn't God, folks. 
So we, we got to make sure we're getting the. Make sure we're getting the. Okay. We're coming down to the landing here, Stan. We're going to land this plane. We're looking for. Tower, can we land now? Can we land? Yes, Miller, you've been circling the airport for 30 minutes now. Land that plane. Okay, we're going to land the plane. I hate when a pastor just keeps going on and on. Land that plane, pastor. Okay, we're landing the plane right now. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Put your seatbelts on. Cover your face, mask. Verse 18 through 20. Don't drink too much wine that cheapens your life. Drink the Spirit of God. Use drinks of Him. Sing songs from your heart to Christ. Sing praises over everything. Any excuse for a song to God, the Father, in the name of our Master, Jesus Christ. Number 12, be filled with God's Spirit, not the devil's. Alcohol is the devil's candy. 70% of people who are in prison got there because they were on alcohol and drugs. So don't tell me it's good for you. Most marriages are because of alcohol. I don't want to hear it. There's more people dying of alcohol stuff than there are of the pandemic. So don't try to push off to me and say it's something good because it's not. Be filled with the Spirit. That's why they call alcohol spirits, because it's the devil's spirits. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And number 13, sing praises to God over everything. I meet Christians, I meet young people that can sing every word out of our, uh, what I call I'm just going to call it what it is, crap rap about shooting people and killing people and having sex with everything. It's a bunch of crap is what it is. There is Christian stuff, but they know all the words of that, but they don't know the words to victory in Jesus, amazing grace. Quit singing that crap. Quit singing that junk and sing praises to God. Quit singing about having sex before marriage. Quit singing about shooting people. Quit singing about being this Blah, 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 and wearing these rings and all this. Sing about holiness unto the Lord is my watchword and song. Am I right, Stan? Yeah. We're going to sing in a minute. There's reasons for things, folks. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this to you. I love the old stuff, man. I was watching Jimmy Swagger Classics last night. I love the old stuff. So I'm going to read this song to you, and we're going to have Stan come, and we're going to sing praises to God. If you heard this song before, you can raise your hand and say amen. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. He's promised that he'd open all of heaven, and brother, it could happen any day. It could be today. So when you get up tomorrow and you're, you lost your job and your dog ran away and you're, you, need, you need a tooth and your dentist is out of town, just say, I feel like something good is about to happen. When God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus and they look to heaven expecting as they pray, I just feel like something good is about to happen and brother, this could be the very day. I've learned in all that happens just to praise Him. For I knew He's working all things for my good. Every tear I shed is worth all the investment for I know he'll see me through. He said he would. He's promised I nor ear can hardly fathom all the things he has in store for those who pray. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, it could be this very day. Woo! Are you coming up here too? You coming? Come on. Come on up here. Grab a thing and bang on the floor or something. All right. Listen, I want to tell you something. There's a reason. There's a biblical reason why we start the service with praise and worship and we end it with praise. There's a reason. Because we, we want to come in praising, we want to leave praising. Does that make sense? I really do feel like something good is about to happen. Do you? Do you feel like something good is about to happen or not? Oh, yeah. Okay. If the worship leader don't believe it, I'm going to have to get me another worship leader. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Something's going to happen. Okay, let's go home. <laughs> Woo! <-hoo. laughs> Something good. 
All right. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor John. Isn't that awesome? Oh, man, I tell you. Father, we come before you, Lord, and we just, we just know something is about to happen, Father. We're here to worship you, Father. We just thank you for this time and this place. We thank you for all that you're doing in all of our lives, Father. We praise you and we love you. Together in this place of worship, your greatness we proclaim. Stand as one in giving you all glory and acclaim. To you our hearts are open, to you our hands we raise. Come take the place of honor in our life Emmanuel our God is with us Prince of Peace Mighty One the ever living God of our Savior rise to open the sky with the dawning of redemption your glory will arise for you alone are worthy here in Zion you are praised our Lord and King forever, you will reign. Emmanuel, our God is with us. Prince of Peace, mighty one, the ever-living God. Emmanuel, our God is with us. Prince of peace, mighty one, the ever living Come take the place of honor in our life. Emmanuel, our God is with us. Prince of peace, mighty one, the ever-living God. Emmanuel, our God is with us. Prince of Peace, mighty one, the ever living God. Give life, you are love, you bring light to the dark. 
purpose you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord it's your breath in our hands so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only great are you lord great and you've given us breath father and we just thank you lord for all that you're doing in our lives father we're here to praise you you are all father light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you so here I am to worship here I am to down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all day, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above humbly you came to the earth you created 
awful of safety came forth. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Oh, let the Son of God enfold you and his spirit like love let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul oh let him have the things that hold you and his spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you whole. Jesus, oh Jesus. Come and fill your land Jesus, oh Jesus Come and fill your land Oh, come and sing this song with gladness As your hearts are filled with joy Lift your hands in sweet surrender to His name Oh, give Him all your tears and sadness Give Him all your years of pain And you'll enter into life In Jesus' name
Yes, Father, fill us. It's overflowing, Lord, that we may minister to the love and compassion and the grace that you have. That we may share the love that you have for us. That we may share what you have done for us, Lord. The testimony that we have is all about you. Help us to share. Help us to love. And we know through Jesus that all these things happen. Help us to walk forward in all that we do, Lord. Help us to always love one another, to play nicely together. Yes, Lord, we just thank you for the love of your Son, the Christ Jesus. Oh, Lord, our praise be to you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, you guys have a wonderful week. We're going to close out in a couple more songs, but just uh, tell that person that you love them and, and just really uh, just cherish them. Your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. People, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. You are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, God is so good, God is so good, hallelujah. God is so good, hallelujah. God is so good, He's so good. Oh, yes, he is. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. You who you are, we worship you. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are, for who you are, for who you are, for who you are, you are, you are good. Have a great week, everyone.